This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. There is a secret that very few people know about. It lies beneath the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Very few people know there is a hole in the floor which leads down into a secret chamber called the Well of Souls. With underground caves leading off in all directions. One of these caves beneath the bedrock leads to the two most important archaeological finds in world history. These two discoveries are extremely significant to all three of the world's major religions the Jews, Muslims, and Christians. The answer to one of the world's most baffling mysteries lay hidden under the site where the Babylonian army destroyed Solomon's temple in 586 BC. These discoveries were found beneath Golgotha, the place of the skull. Ron Wyatt, an amateur archaeologist, was walking not far from the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem along an ancient stone quarry known to many as Golgotha, the place of the skull, the Calvary Escarpment. Ron was talking with a man from the local Israeli Antiquities Authority when without warning Ron, for the first time in his life, was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy. His left pointed to the bottom of the cliff face. Ron said, That's Jeremiah's grotto, and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. Ron had no idea why he suddenly did or said these things. A few years later, Ron and his two sons found themselves excavating straight down at the base of a cliff on Golgotha when the first amazing discovery began to unfold. They came upon four cross holes cut 23 inches down into the rock, one higher than the rest on a platform and set back. The other three were in a line lower down and in front. They learned that there was only one place in all of Jerusalem that anyone had ever been crucified or stoned. It was here at Golgotha. The upper cross hole would most likely have been reserved for the worst or most notorious criminal, and we know from the biblical account that the two cross holes on either side held the two thieves that were crucified with Christ. In one of the cross holes, Ron's son found a Roman coin with Emperor Tiberius' face on it. He was emperor from 14 to 37 AD, and by our yearly calendar of our Lord, Jesus was the age of 33 when he was crucified. This was where Jesus was actually crucified. Emptying into one of the cross holes was a large crack. Obviously created in an earthquake, the crack ran down the rock face and went deep. Ron remembered on the day Jesus was crucified that there was a terrible earthquake, the earth shook and the rocks split. Was this the moment marked for all time that Jesus breathed his last? Was this the moment the curtain in the temple split, revealing the Ark of the Covenant to be hidden away somewhere else? And then the confirmations came, as if whispers from long-dead saints revealing their secrets of old. As they continued digging, they discovered the foundation walls of an early Christian church that had been built around the crucifixion site. As they were digging to uncover the front foundation of the wall of the church, 
they discovered a large, thick, round stone, 13 feet 2 inches in diameter and nearly 2 feet thick in front of the crucifixion site. Had the stone that covered the tomb that Jesus borrowed for three days and opened with life inside been preserved by an early Christian church and kept as a reminder that he lives before the very place where the cross stood which Jesus laid down his life as a sacrifice for our sin? While the unused garden tomb only a hundred feet away still lays open without a stone. All the measurements taken to verify and re-verify fit perfectly. Still searching for the Ark of the Covenant, Ron worked with a small Arab man who would crawl in through many gaps and passageways that were too small for Ron to easily fit through, first to see if they would lead to any large rooms or they were just a dead end. Finally coming upon an unusually small hole that looked unlikely, he asked the man to crawl through the tiny entrance to the cave, as usual. When the man had done so, he clamored back out of the hole and rushed out with terror in his eyes, screaming, What's in there? What's in there? The man hurried, terrified, through and out of the cave system and refused ever to return. When asked why he had run away and what he saw in the cave, the little man said, Only darkness. I didn't see anything. Had the man not been so terrified, Ron wouldn't have checked the cave for himself, but now he knew it was holy fear that had driven this man out. He knew the Spirit of the Lord was in this place. Crawling down into the cave, he uncovered some dry rotted wood boards, which when moved aside revealed animal skins. Something shiny was under the animal skins. Moving them aside, he uncovered the table of showbread from the first temple. A marvelous find, yes, but this wasn't why he was there. Continuing to shift aside more rocks and wood, he noticed a large stone vault in the corner of the room. The lid was cracked and had been moved aside. He shone his flashlight down through the crack and saw a chest of beaten gold. It was the Ark of the Covenant. Strangely, there was a brown substance on it. It had been some kind of liquid. But what was it? As he followed the brownish trail up the wall of the cave and looked up to its ceiling, gripped by what he saw, he would never be the same again. There it was. The fracture in the rock at the foot of Jesus' cross from the earthquake that opened a fissure 21 feet down through solid rock. With that earthquake, the very finger of God himself cracked open and moved the top of that Ark of the Covenant. And Ron realized as he looked back down to the perfectly preserved Ark, the water and the blood that flowed out of Jesus Christ had spilled out onto the mercy seat and here on earth, just as Jesus had done with his own blood sacrifice at the ark's mercy seat in heaven. The word of God came to him from 1 John 5, which states, This is the one who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood, 
and it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which He has given on earth about His Son. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ron lost consciousness for 45 minutes in that Holy of Holies chamber. It was later confirmed that the blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant was from someone who had only one human parent. There were no paternal chromosomes, no genes from a father, only one Y chromosome. God the Father knew that Jesus was going to be the sacrifice lamb that takes away the sin of the world and he placed the Ark of the Covenant directly beneath him at the hour of his death over 600 years before he would give his life there for us. The Ark of the Covenant with the blood of Jesus was discovered by amateur archaeologist Ron Wyatt in 1982. So why have we not heard of this before now? Ron was told by those that hold the secret that the Ark of the Covenant would not be shown to the world until the mark of the Antichrist law is passed. As one last physical testimony of Jesus Christ here on earth to the living God. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.